Good morning and welcome again as we have come together to worship the Lord here at the Holden Beach Chapel. It's wonderful to see you. Um, most of you I can still recognize even with your masks on, but it's, uh, it's great to have you here and I'm sure that you're going to be glad that you have come into the house of the Lord on this day. Uh, I want to mention to you, uh, the uh, nominating committee is still struggling a bit with the time and talents, and if people have not been coming, and that's normally when people turn in their time and talent sheets. And so when they are not uh, coming, they're not turning them in, but still, the work of the chapel continues. So if you have not turned that in, if you have not told us where you would like to work, uh, we would like for you to do that so that we don't have to inform you where we'd like for you to work. Um, <laughs> Not really, but of course we would, uh, wherever you, you um, would enjoy, you think that you would enjoy being a part of this fellowship and working in, in the upkeep, maintenance, and the, and the ongoing ministries of our, of our chapel, we would certainly like for you to let us know so that we can help you in your faith journey. Um, you know, uh, if you are a visitor, I will remind you about the second helping where you would take your, your things on Saturday morning between uh, 7 and 12, 1 up at the, uh, the Beach Mart, so that uh, to help the, air, the people in our area that are in need of food and supplies. Um, again, we are delighted that you are here, that you have chosen to worship with us today, and we are prayerful that you will experience the presence of the Lord in your life on this beautiful Sunday morning. May we go to the Lord in prayer, please. Lord, we pray that you would stir our hearts this morning. We pray that you would lift us out of our boredom, lift us out of our indifference, lift us out of our preoccupation with our concerns and even our routines so that we can be true children of faith. Lord, help us to see the possibilities of doing right and good and then send us out of here today next week with opportunities to touch the world with the power of the living God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. morning. Uh, today's scripture lesson is Psalm 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give lights to my eyes or I will sleep in death. <clears throat> and my enemies will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. It's the word of the God for the people of God. Okay. Please pray with me. This is a prayer for uncertain times. Lord, may we who are merely inconvenienced remember that those who live are at stake. For those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health and making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who settle in for quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. And during this time, we may have not be able to physically wrap our arms around each other, but let us fi yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. Okay. Well, please join me in, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we're going to stand and sing together. The words are there in your bulletin. This is indeed my father's world. May we stand and sing together. Pray, please. Here are our tithes and our gifts and our offerings, Father. They speak loudly about our inner commitment. Let them be filled, Lord, with faith and endowed with love for Christ, for it's in his name that we give. Amen.
Thank you very much, ladies. You know, the thing about handbells, not only is the music beautiful, but there's also the aural appeal of seeing that. And today we find out we add choreography to it um, as you were moving up and down the line so gracefully. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. It's my privilege this morning to introduce to those of you who uh, may need the introduction of Emily Corzine. Um, you know, there are, I, I have so many ministers who come in week by week, and some people you actually um, immediately have a, a strike up a friendship with. And Emily is one of those people, naturally warm personality, that you feel like you've known her for a long time, even if you just met her. She is ordained in the uh, Presbyterian Church. She has credentials in the United Church of Christ. She's associated with them. And I noticed, I told her she was trying to cover all the bases because she worked at a, at a Methodist hospital in the neonatal. So, I'm, and I'm counting your friend with this old Baptist to have everything covered, okay? We are delighted to have her uh, drive down from Ohio. We welcome her once again to the chapel. We look forward to it. Emily, thank you for being here today. Uh, greetings uh, in Christ's name uh, once again here at Holden Beach Chapel. I bring greetings from First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Columbus, Ohio. And I have to say we have um, had zero people in our sanctuary since March 13th. And so we've been preaching to an empty sanctuary of 700 pews. So it's lovely to see faces uh, this morning. Um, and it's been a joy to be here at Holden Beach Chapel, but also Holden Beach this week. So, uh, Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 10. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of the little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. Silence in us any voice but your own, that as your word is proclaimed, we may hear what you have for us this day. Amen. I grew up in a small Ohio town. Some of my favorite memories are sitting on the front porch of my grandmother's house, swinging on the swing, watching cars drive by, it was the hub of activity for the quaint little village and its very oversized 4th of July festival and parade. The parade would gather more people on that one hot July morning than the entire population of the town. Her porch was on the corner. It was a prime location to see who's who and welcomed people to this great festival in small town Americana. It was also the porch where I learned very early about the power of hospitality. No matter who you were, no matter when you showed up, no matter if you had anything to offer the summer breakfast buffet, you were welcome on my grandmother's front porch. Stop for a bit before you find your seat for the parade. Update us on your life. Share with us the good news or the sad news of the year gone by. The door was always open. Old friends brought new friends, and they came again the next year. It was a place of radical hospitality. Skip ahead a few decades. We've since sold my grandmother's house with the great front porch. I've lived in two houses and too many apartments to count, and none of them ever had a front porch. Our house now has just a concrete slab. It's too small to have a swing. It doesn't even really fit the two planters of flowers that we have there. Everyone's moved to a back patio or a back deck where entertaining can happen of your invited guests. It's a different feeling altogether, but I'm grateful for the lessons that I learned on my grandmother's front porch. In our text this morning, Jesus speaks these words of encouragement at the end of a larger discourse about the mission 
set before these would-be disciples of Jesus and what their participation in this work would look like. They are taking on a huge task. Their following Jesus is hard enough, and now he is sending them out, reminding them that the work before them is not going to be easy. But it is going to be important. Their work, Jesus reminds them, will reorient them to their own identity and their own purpose. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Jesus suggests to these would-be disciples that they are no longer members of their own individual families and residents in their respective neighborhoods, but they're disciples of a teacher. And this is where Jesus suggests that the disciples lo love their disciples' love for him must extend beyond their love for their family and indeed beyond the love for their very own lives. Jesus is sending these disciples out into the world with warning but encouragement that not all who they encounter will welcome them. Not everyone will invite them onto their front porch, let alone into their house. But Jesus knows that the kingdom of God is at hand. He also sees God's love breaking in all around him. In the most hopeless and distraught people, Jesus sees God's love surrounding them. In the most broken down situations, Jesus sees God's grace already present. And there's something about the tone of someone who loves people that much, who sees God's kingdom everywhere, who can look at someone they disagree with or even despise and even love them so much that they see God's beloved child. There is something about the tone of a person like that that makes you want to follow. It makes you want to change your life in a similar way. It makes you want to start seeing God's kingdom all around. I recently heard a story of a woman in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's a story of an artist and her front porch. More specifically, it's a story about how she helped her neighborhood speak love into a difficult situation. Artist, poet, and performer Vanessa German says, if my hands were anything other than hands, they would be a street corner jazz quintet. Imagine that. She says this as she paints and sculpts on her front porch in her neighborhood in Homewood, a suburb, uh, a neighborhood in Pittsburgh. It's a neighborhood where kids often deal with the effects of violence on their streets. When she tells people she lives in Homewood, their jaws drop, like they feel sorry for her. But she disagrees. She says, Homewood is like my Harlem. There is so much life and creativity in this community. She loves she lives on a, on a busy corner with activity, people waiting for the bus, children playing. As people move about, they see her making sculpture and art. They ask her what she's making, and kids ask her, can we do it too? She opens up her front porch. She gathers whatever she has, scraps of material, paint brushes, pieces of wood. The kids come into her front yard and onto her front porch and make art and foster community. Her front porch and her front yard are covered with art and supplies and kids, letting kids come and make art while she is making her art on her porch, she says is good for the soul. Kids have come to find sanctuary on her porch, a place to bring their creativity and have found a place to belong. Except sometimes, 21 shots are fired down the street and two young people are dead. And yet somehow in the midst of their grief and their pain, instead of trying to provoke change with anger and outrage, this community was able to sow love. Vanessa German began making and distributing what she calls nonviolent yard signs in their neighborhood. She says, I began handing them out because friends and neighbors who, like me, saw this as an opportunity to say stop, without judgment, but with love. These signs say something like, 
No guns. Keep summer fun. Stop shooting. We love you. And since her first batch of 200 yard signs, she's made 800, maybe 1,000 more. She says, quote, people flock to these signs. They place them all around Homewood and beyond as a way of coming together as a community, as citizens in a global hood, to respond with love, unquote. This is a repentant community and a repentant moment for this community. Following the love-sparked inspiration of an artist, they decide to turn together. They decide in the midst of a very anxious and scary and grievous situation to start seeing God's love everywhere, even in the people who run in gangs and even in the people who carry guns. This project is called Love Front Porch. Love Front Porch says, believe in what you believe, love what you love, let it be what it is, and do what it has to do. German says, I believe in the power of love. And art is love. And the community is the museum, the gallery, the exhibit space, that art unites. Vanessa claims that Space is where all people of all ages can transform their community. A community stands side by side, and when they do that, they are better together. I'm not, so, I'm not sure what sort of result that yard sign campaign really had. I don't know if gun violence really decreased. I don't know if the message even got to the gangs, but I do know that there is something irresistible about the love that this community showed. I love the story of Love Front Porch, and I'm challenged by it very much as well, because it completely collides with my need for my adult world privacy and protection, and my ability to control who's on my little front stoop, let alone my back pack. I usually think twice about answering the door when someone is selling candy or telling me that the last rainstorm did massive damage to my roof. It makes me wonder what I have to learn from Love Front Porch. In our gospel lesson this morning, Jesus says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever gives even a, a cup of cold water to the little ones in the name of a disciple, you will not lose your reward. When Jesus speaks these words of encouragement, it makes me think about the mission to which we are called. As the larger church, as a community of faith, you're in your own cities and towns, many of which broken and divided by so many lines in this world, racial lines, socioeconomic lines, Recently, in my own town of Columbus, local artists have united to bring street art into the community. And they were asked to create art on the front of many businesses in and around Capitol Square. And some, just a few blocks away, where my church is located, there were many broken windows that had been boarded up after protests at the end of May, after George Floyd's murder in Minneapolis. And in Columbus, protest marches have been happening every day since then, calling for justice and equality and peace. In Columbus, following a love-sparked inspiration of artists across the city, people have gathered to create art on these boarded-up windows. Neighbors helping neighbors, helping them paint and tell the story of those who seek freedom and who seek justice, and those who want to transform a community of brokenness into a community of hope and unity. It's called hashtag art unites CBUS. All across downtown, there are powerful images of resistance and struggle and triumph, and poetic justice and freedom and unity and love. Huge plywood boards have been transformed into beautiful murals, images of welcome and love. They're images that say, you matter, that 
we see you and that you are loved. And I've gotten to know one of these graphic design artists who painted some of these murals. Her name is Lisa McClymont. She wanted to help anchor what meaning could happen on the streets of Columbus in other places across this country and offer support and hope for a city. The messages really took off and wonderful pieces of art are now covering once boring plywood. She designed and painted a mural on the building just across the street from First Congregational Church. It's a cityscape at night with a blue background and shiny yellow stars across its entirety. And on it is a quote from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which reads, only in the darkness can you see the stars. Love sparked inspiration from these artists, our poetic and prophetic words in our community. They are images and challenges for the time in which we are all living. They're a visual representation of deep pain and woundedness, they also show us how far we have to go before everyone is welcomed in a community and where everyone has a chance to thrive, not only survive. If art really can unite a neighborhood, maybe art really can unite a community and transform a world. And like Vanessa German, Lisa McClymont is transforming her community. And they're both prophets speaking love and justice into difficult situations. And maybe the transformation of a neighborhood and community begins at a place where people can come together. It's like these love-inspired artists have been on Love Front Porch. And I think once you've been to a place like Love Front Porch, once you see people in stories of those who create art out of deep places of pain and woundedness, you can't go back to seeing the world the way you used to, and then you're compelled to do something about it. Because of God's great love for us in Jesus Christ, discipleship means carrying out and embodying Jesus' mission. Those who go out are likened to prophets, the righteous and little ones. The image links the disciples to strong prophetic tasks and acts of justice and mercy, even as they are reminded that it won't be easy. And they're reminded of their own vulnerability and their own fragility. Once the disciples go out into these communities, Jesus sends them to the world will never look the same. We too can see the mission of the disciples, this outpouring of welcome with, with new eyes. And in the stories and the struggles of courageous women like Vanessa and Lisa, speaking up for justice and wanting to hear, heal their communities like the work of prophets. I'm not sure where you find yourselves these days. Maybe you find yourselves struggling to see God's love. Maybe you've tried to follow but have fallen short. Maybe you have been so distracted by one pandemic or another, that you've overlooked God's love breaking in. However you are, I know an opportunity where an inspired artist on a front porch of our lives invites us, with a face full of love, to repent and to turn and to change our lives and follow. It's Christ. Christ invites us to start recognizing that God's irresistible love is already present in our lives and waiting to be found. As we welcome one, we welcome God among us. And when we begin to understand the love God showed the world through the face, faith and face of Jesus Christ, our whole world changes. We start to look at the world through God's eyes rather than our own and that we see everything, that everything has value because God loves it and because Christ died for it. Everything in our world God loves beyond our own ability to love. And I believe we're all here because we have seen echoes of this love that has been seen from God in our own lives. And that we're all here because it's already 
started to work in us and to change us. So people of God, let that love take hold. Let God's love take hold until the only thing you see around you, in every person's face, in every story and encounter, are the marks of God's kingdom of love breaking in. The call to a radical welcome and inclusion is all around us. In this space, in this community, it always has been and probably always will be. The welcome of those into your midst in the name of Jesus Christ has the power to unite a community, to unite a city, a country, and a world. The good news is that God will continue to raise prophetic voices in our midst to call us anew into the community of God. The bad news is that we often reject those voices. But God keeps sending people out into our midst, just like the disciples, because we are so hungry for love and wholeness. And let us pray that God's spirit will give us ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts to receive. And may someday, maybe we'll all find our way to love front porch. so much, Emily. Uh, I'm sure that you have um, experienced the presence of God today, and I'm glad that you are here to share it. And now may we stand for our benediction. <clears throat>